Now, when the Bible tells you something made everything, you should respect it. Are we together now? Yes. That all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Without him, without the word, was not anything made that was made. Without the word was not any destiny that was made. Without the word was not any life that was made. Without the word was not any man of God that was made. That means when you have the word, you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word. Are we together now? When the Bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth, it means that he's giving you access. It's a scepter of dominion. That with this word, when he grants it unto you, then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Now, truthfully speaking, it may take a while, you see, because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line, my brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you. What God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy. Trust me. You must have something greater than material things to get material things. You can't have something less than material things and then have these things. God is If all God gives you now is a car and a house and money, he cheated you. He will give you something that will compel the Gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising. Are we together now? There is nothing in the Bible that is a true blessing that is physical. Listen carefully. There is nothing in the Bible that is given physical, like you give someone something physical. You may call it a blessing, but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. He knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses, the sensory perceptions that come from his environment. So he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life. If it is true you are receiving favor, where is it? And you stand and say, boy, it's true. Oh, I, God, you said, I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his garden. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them, but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal. Say temporal. Poverty, temporal. Low levels in the spirit, temporal. He said, but the things that are unseen, they are eternal. 
So, we must be spiritual. And by spiritual, it means that we use the word of God as our new plane. Our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. If, if you give yourself halfway, hoping so that if it fails, at least you can put your leg somewhere. It, it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you. You throw yourself in this thing and say, if I perish, I perish. This, this scientific Christianity, I know God is faithful, but let me patch him with an uncle. So one leg is here, one leg. So that whatever happens, your ego is not strong. And that very ego is why you may never see the power of God. Because you have not proven to God that you have thrown all to him. And you just come and say, God, if you don't help me, I don't have an option. God says, this is what I like. Now that you have stepped aside, let me show you that I am a great God. with less tonight I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of God don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God it's one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know Life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category. I'm passionate about what I do not know. I'm passionate about the danger I may submit myself to, not knowing what I should know. And so my heart is always panting to find out, Lord, thank you for what you have shown me. But what else do I not know? If you do not know, look at me for instance. If I'm standing at the edge of this stage, and I do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down. 
I'm just shifting innocently. The depression will not think that just because I'm not aware, it will not touch me. I will fall and it can kill me. Is that true? So when someone tells you, hey, hold on. When you get here, stand. That knowledge has delivered you. Is that true? So we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for God to expose us to the ways of God. And then it is an opportunity to experience the power of God in the midst of his people. It's, 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 it's not going to be possible to present a God that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him. It's one thing to know that the possibilities of God are encapsulated in this Bible. But it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it. You don't need to experience everything, but that God does something in your life that you can now say, Kai, God, now I know. I know. So the next time you are talking to someone and says, which God? You say, no, forget about the apostle. Look at my life. I'm now a testimony, an epistle that God is able to do this and that. Hallelujah. There is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word. The spirit of distraction. You can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking, you are learning. No. The Bible says that the sower sows the word. Right there, Satan is in the midst of, of, of God's people. Roaming around and looking for careless hearts. And he comes by himself and takes the word. So that you are ever learning. Oh, this topic. Ah, I know it. I remember Genesis chapter this verse this. But there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. So please, let's challenge ourselves. And say, Lord, it is true that I don't serve you just for results. But Lord, I'm determined. I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life. If you see God's hand in one, two, three areas, and remaining four, five, six, you are encouraged. But where you get zero over six of God's hand, it's not enough testimony. Are we together? It is the word of God that builds. It is the word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of God allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of God gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and God says there is a seat I have given you in the prophetic and the word of God gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the Spirit as a testimony, not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince, you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, um, God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people. You will be angry. You will quarrel people. You will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion. It is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. 
and this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because Satan can also mimic God and carry you somewhere that the equipping, the wiring, the spiritual configuration within you should not, it does not allow you to be there. And so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy. Are we together now? Because the word of God did not give you the balance and the proper allocation. Your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for. Every prophecy you lied. Every prophetic command never came to pass. And you find out you are frustrated. And you stand and say, Lord, what am I doing with my life? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are walking in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know, God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do Another government will say it was not me. The past government has gone and never will come forever. But when God gives you a spiritual inheritance, no man, no tribe, they may hate you, but my brothers and my sisters, when a key is given to you, the key is given in a way and a manner that God will cause nations to pass through that door. It's impossible to ignore you. These are the truths I have found. There is rest when you find All 
this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now they are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no, they are, they are, you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you are saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that he must die died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already god bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of god I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, Oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series. Um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it. Um, it's very powerful. Very powerful. God, thank you. Thank you. There are things when you find in this kingdom. Please listen to me. There are things when you find in this kingdom. God, hell, and men will know you found something. There are things when you find only God will know you found it. There are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know but by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become so tonight i will just do an introduction of it true riches just an introduction it's not part one we have a series next we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year but and and don't think i'm talking about money at all settle down and listen and let god bless you because when we hear riches the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Read with me, believers. One, two, read. Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from... Let's read one more time. One, two, read. Uh 
Uh-huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust? True riches. There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it, among other things, is faithfulness. Listen very carefully. And then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the Bible calls true riches is a commitment. Meaning that God observes and sees your faithfulness. Listen carefully. He can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing. But whilst you're doing it, he's observing you. And that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test. And like a report card, God calls you and says, I give you something called true riches. And he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you? That means aside from God, who else has that access? He's not just trying to tell you. The, he's saying who else? Who else can commit to you? This mystery that we call true riches. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 2 to 8. Listen very carefully and you'll understand something powerful tonight. Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3. How that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote a four in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace so is a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel that i should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries. The Bible says there is a grace. That this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the Bible calls the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. 
Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that, and he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business? Naira and Kobo? No, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That men, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere when Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of Christ. I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer. It still is my prayer. And so when the Lord opened me up to this, I was so blessed. Let me tell you sincerely, and, and God is my witness, and I tell you this. I'm a, I'm a student. I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody who is, 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 is arrogant to say all oh, this and that. I ha I'm a product of many, many, many spiritual minds. But when it came to this dealings, the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world. See this. This is the key. The mystery that connects to this. And many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. Say, because I'm the one who told them to. Hmm. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this, is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you 
and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. These spiritual blessings, these unsearchable riches, what you call true riches, they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage. There has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration. Men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. From tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations, etc., etc., everything looks like it's against you. You only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage. Are we together now? Yes. Um, come, come doctor. If you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here, he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and I'm standing here and someone is holding me. These things are my advantage. Is that true? Now, even if he's stronger than me, if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors, you see that? I will get a dimension of result that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability. I have trusted systems that have provided an advantage. And the Bible tells us that these unsearchable riches, they were designed by God as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign. So he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification. It is ultimately God that gives us victory, my brothers and my sisters, but the victory is broken into systems. So you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided. And you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage. Are we together now? Bless you. Thank you. So true riches I define as spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of of God's life here and now. We're just doing an introduction. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. 
So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred, listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10. And has made us, now them you understand. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings and priests. And the Bible says, and we shall reign. Where? On earth. So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now, I hope you understand. Let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many, he is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We're refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder, it put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the holy spirit and then the operation of the word the logos and the operation of the spirit of god begin in your life you begin to learn the ways of god and then the word of god begins to wash you huh? like you wash a cloth begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again the light is driving out that darkness and gradually, gradually, by all those exercises, conformity and transformation, not impartation yet, conformity and transformation. These things will remain for a very long time in your life. And then you begin to see the grace speaking. Are we together now? Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil. There are things that are correct. So God will not reset your mind. And then he will do that only with your permission. So it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years. That's how slow you wanted God to take you. Are we together now? So you find out that after 10 years, the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. 
God is limited by your yieldedness. Limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predetermined counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. Are we together now? A work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness. That's why they can't take credit for it. It was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide. So they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is. The only thing they have to do is correct their errors, not pray for new visions. They have been seeing it since. It's just that they have been interpreting nonsense. So what they are repenting of is not, it's not, it's not a hazy vision. There are people who even, they got born again and there and then, they started seeing visions. There and then. Others came from priesthood. A wrong key forced the door. To, you, you understand what I mean? A wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door. I hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes, even when you get born again, the eyes will not close again. It's been opened. Hmm. The only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access. Uh, believers, are you learning something? Yes. To you, it looks like you are just seeing visions. No, there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway. And there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit. And you are routing by a wrong door. You will not know because it's subtle. After 10 years, you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil. Are we together now? So when you get born again, it's true that your eyes were open with the charm. You will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you, but the realm of the spirit is already open to you. It's true. Systems of advantage that believers can access and God can grant them grace. Maybe, let me just touch on two or three of them at least. We'll, we'll still do them next year. The unsearchable riches. These are the things that when I look at in my life, sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say, God, thank you. Thank you. You don't owe me anything. You have been faithful. I found them and they are very powerful. Can I give you the first one? The first of these true riches, this mystery, is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now that it is that grace that is released on you. If this grace is not present, you cannot have conscience. It is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men. Not mercy. Mercy has its place. The goodness. Everything I'm telling you, I will show you from the Bible. You will now see why God told Moses, it is my goodness. I will allow you to see my goodness. The goodness of God allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance. But the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance. The word repent is not for sinners. I've told you this. It's not a word that is just left for sinners. It's a kingdom expression. A system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory. It's called repentance. Let's look at a very serious scripture. Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Just write it down and let's read. We're Bible students. Romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judges listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judges another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, 
and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on, stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the. Remember, we're talking of true riches. We are fishing them out now. That there is something called the riches of his goodness. What does it do? And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. If you ever repent, it is the goodness of God that came to you. It's not something you did by your strength to say, oh, I think, I... no, the, the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that God has been good to you. This is the Bible. It says it is one of the true riches given to the saints. The riches of God's goodness. Hmm. Are we still together tonight? Did you know that the riches of God or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the king? Many people just ah oh God. When the Bible says surely goodness, we quote it every time. Surely goodness and mercy. I think we are singing a special number. This is a very deep mystery. If the goodness of God does not go with you, I will tell you. I will show you people from the Bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches. You will see what happens when God looks at people. Jesus looks and says, "You are poor in spirit, that they are bankrupt." He knew what he was saying. They had food in their houses, but there were certain attributes of the, the advantage of God given to the saints. It's not there in their life. Let me show you. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. This is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh-huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child and kill the person. And by the next day, he's moving and smiling. Let me tell you what that person needs is not revival. What that person needs is not even mercy. What that person needs is the goodness. One of the two riches sent like an error. When the goodness of God meets that person, he breaks down immediately. Two riches. The unsearchable riches of Christ. So God looks at men and sends his goodness to them. And all of a sudden, you see men translating from level to level. And they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it. Keep that scripture again, please. Romans 2 and verse 4. The riches of his goodness. Not just his goodness, the riches, the wealth. You see that a man who had this was David. David knew the goodness of God. That's why he became a man after God's heart. Lucifer didn't have this. If Luce, no, no demon has this, Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No, it is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. Hmm. Evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades. Don't just pray for signs. Oh God, let them know I was called. Mm -mm. Pray intelligently. Lord, let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder. This is what happens in redemption camp. When Papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message, and says, I will count one to five. One. And you see people run. They don't even know what is bringing them out. This is what the generals had. Charles G. Finney. Are we together now? They had this in, in very abundant measures. They understood this wealth of the kingdom. 
called the goodness of God. When we say the goodness of God, we just mean his ability to be benevolent. It's more than that. The primary assignment of the goodness of God is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory. The Bible calls it his goodness. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Is somebody learning something tonight? He says, who shall commit to you? If God opens your eyes and you see it and engage it, then your life will change. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, what? not willing that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is God's willingness. So he sees our family members, and he already knows that the way they are going, their lives can never reflect God and then his goodness. Some of you, it was the goodness of God that brought you here to Koinonia, not invitation. It was the goodness of God that gave you access to the teachings because God designed that you come to repentance. First of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of God come out of your life. Say the unsearchable riches of Christ. Let's try another. So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign so that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah. What happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle alert. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of God. I, I got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan, trusting God to help them to start a life and they the young boy and his friend, true story, they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father. You know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their um, whatever it is. And this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park. They were changing and then when it was the turn, you see how the devil, you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it would help them start life. And the young boy, it was his turn. He was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck. It was a miracle that the boy survived. And the family said, I'm not hearing anything. Just get my car and bring for me. That was how they had to look for... I, these are people like counsel. They had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of God is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in, in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take God to come and lift you up and yet you see the boys moving around. And I was just looking at him and he was looking around. No remorse. Look at armed robbers that kill people in the night. And by the next morning, they pass the same house they robbed. And you see them smiling. During crisis, the people that kill people, do they die suddenly? They are alive. They pass a house that they know I'm the reason for the obituary in this house. And then they pass and laugh. They have not encountered the goodness of God. Let me tell you, 
it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of God. They are the people we call heartless, conscienceless, like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of Nigerians. This is what they need. Are we together now? Number two. Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. You understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times, when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8. It's going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living, will make your life meaningful.
meaningful by every standard. Proverbs chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry? Look at how merciful God is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking. The Bible says wisdom is crying. Crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her. It says an understanding. Are you seeing them together? Wisdom is crying. Understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates. The place of exchange. Where men enter and go out, wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors. Four. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is speaking. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple. Simple there does not mean humble. Simple means unwise. Meaning there is, there is no fortitude for comprehension. It says, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Seven. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, and there is nothing forward and perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom, two a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh -huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Please read by the spirit. This is what I want you to do. Now wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying by me. Kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry, it's not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom, a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. 
when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, three more verses or two, then I was by him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of results without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, what? Long life. Neither hast thou asked, here it is again, unfaithful mammon, riches for thyself. Nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies, but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Let's see what God gave him. I have given, given, given. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings. You see that? Every time kings were there, wisdom, understanding. Go to chapter 4 from verse 29. Go to chapter 4 and verse 29. Chapter 4, 1 Kings and verse 29. Read with me please. One, two, read. And God gave, go ahead, Solomon, wisdom, uh -huh, and understanding, exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sun that is on the seashore, the manifesto, the attributes of all this spiritual blessing. 
Next verse. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Uh huh. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkor, than Dada. All these guys are champions of wisdom. They were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom. And his fame was in all nations round about. 32. For he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were 1,005. Worship team. You see how songs come? An encounter with the spirit of wisdom. Believe me. One song that will cause the nations to bless you. Have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50? They are like two, three. You know this is not human. You know it by the way it lasts. Anything that is human has the characteristic of fading. The moment time has no power over it, it came from the realm of the spirit. There are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it. There were songs that were written last month. We are tired of it. It tells you the dimension. It's not that there, there's something wrong with the song. The dimension from which the song came, if it is that which is of the earth is earthly. That which is of heaven is heavenly. 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon even unto the high sop that springeth out of the wall, he spake a lot. He spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish. I think there's one more verse. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth. Does this look like Gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising? Meaning there is what a man can possess, my brothers and my sisters. You may be in a shrine or you may be in a, in a room that is made of mud blocks, but kings will come. When you possess what kings cannot buy, they will come to you. The last thing I'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays. Because wisdom has a location. Job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when God wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of Christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why I'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job, is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah, where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, oh, earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding. Meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth. 
No wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth. The earth hides fruitfulness. Water hides abundance. You read your Bible, everything, the birds of the air and everything came out of water. And so he said, the depth said it is not with me. The sea said it is not with me. Next verse. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Uh huh. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx, nor the sapphire. Next verse. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? He listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things. And he says that wisdom is not there. Seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard of his fame. Hmm. Look at this. Destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics Good understanding. God understanded the way thereof. That's a secret. Only God understands the way. And he knoweth the place thereof. Hmm. No, just, just stop at 23. God understanded the way. That means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom, who gave him? That's why I told you it is, it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children. The results show you that this is not human. My prayer is that somebody will, will catch a dimension of this grace, the wisdom of God, that you will arise with it, my brothers and my sisters, and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you. The Bible says she shall bring thee. In other words, I can find wisdom from a small room. And wisdom says, follow me. Like Peter following an angel. I step into the place of great men and I say, what am I doing here? And wisdom says, this is where I live. Whoever possesses me will live with me. And you will eat the bread of kings. Because wisdom brought you there. But how many people desire the wisdom of God? So many people will tell you this is an interruption. There are many men of God that will not focus. Listen, many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God. Just go, all these pastors, you are just lucky, you are anointed, you are anointed, that's all. Let me hustle my life. No, sir. No, sir. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The Bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he giveth his beloved sleep. When God gives you wisdom, your eyes will see things. 
and it will surprise you what God will make out of your life. No man's anger can change what the wisdom of God does in your life. Let me tell you this. Learn this early in life. Whether people believe in you or not, it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life. If you ever look at a man holding these unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything. Because death is the last enemy to be destroyed. So if death testifies that I've hands up, then you two hands up quickly. That is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in Revelation. One of the four horse riders. And it gives up and says, no, this one is above my power and above my dimension. Wisdom. Knowledge. Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? The hearing ear. Listen. Access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. The Spirit saith. The Bible says, The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, are we together now? Some shall depart from the faith, he says, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. In the, the spirit speaketh expressly. That means one of the greatest, you are at a point of advantage. The hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office. It is a grace that God washes your ear with high eyes up so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto God and say, Lord, as I'm starting ministry, give me the ear that hears. Let me tell you this. Listen. I have studied the church in Nigeria for many years. I have studied the church in Africa. I have studied men and women of God, and respectfully so. I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the spirit of god is going because the anointing goes where the spirit is going wherever the voice of god is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god 
the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what you will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces, you must be careful. Because most times, we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift, that prophetic operation is at work, it necessarily means you yourself are accurate. It's not true. Have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the spirit you stand and watch and say i've heard him god is saying go left and everybody is saying go right use common sense you know you heard god when you move left after five years people look at you i have seen a bit of what hearing god can do this ministry today my brothers and my sisters is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches you won't go down I'm not one person who comes all the time and say God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says God said just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. 
if it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano. You can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn. But you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life, there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you, God is not always speaking. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying, God is always speaking. No, sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace. Because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now, it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments, God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you, God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And no, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit down and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and to you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me. And just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3. Put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life. There are things God has said. Listen to me. There are things God has said. When God talks, notice that God doesn't care what you are seeing. He tells you what you will do. And he will do it. So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because... Many of you have gone, no disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. 
because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what god is saying this spiritual haziness has a science the encumbrances of life can push you your child's school fees your life and god is saying fast for three days and you say is it god is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of god but let me tell you there are times only god will help you because even you you don't know whether this is god again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport. Oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car, I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass judging. I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira, you don't have, or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when, when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare, and then they now said, Everybody bring your money, and people were bringing them. But my God is my witness, my heart was at peace. This is what happens when it's God that is speaking. You leave Him to be responsible for the word. I just obeyed. And that was how someone brought out, paid my transport fare. I dropped at flyover here, entered the bus, happy because I felt at least whatever it is, this one I'll pay. And someone knew me in the car and paid. I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there. It was a message. God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he see him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. When God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. You, you, you. Look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable. hearing ear, the seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye 
an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and said hey relax an angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss and the bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called melita when you hear god you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no i'm sitting on the voice of god roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you You've heard me say it humorously that 
when a woman who has been pregnant for, who has been barren for say eight, nine, ten years, even if that woman puts to bed and intends as a couple to have four or five children, they will have to add an extra 10 or 15 years to their life to space the children well. But when God gives that woman triplets, that is nine years of three, three years spacing in nine months. That's a letter from God to creation. I'm still on the throne. Regardless, I am still on the throne. So many times, God will allow Satan to just exhaust his pride on earth. And when he is done, God will say, are you done now? Let me show you that there is no such thing as yesterday and tomorrow in my economy. I'm not just motivating you. That he said, when the Lord turn again, the captivity of Zion, the captivity of Zion. I saw you yesterday, you were a beggar, but I see you tomorrow. You have experience. There are two ways to climb a tower. You use the ladder or you use a lift. You will arrive. The problem is you may die before you get to one place. You will climb and by the third or fourth floor you are there. But there is a technology hidden somewhere where you can stand and you are moving by the energy of that lift. And within a minute you are there and with honor you can step out. They were like them that dream. Lord, I, I thought I would have been grateful if you did it slowly. The fact that you are doing it, but that you chose to move this far. That when I started this year, my collective goal was to reach here. And in one month, you gave me five years goal. This is the God of heaven. If God answers you like a man, why will you praise him? God will never do things the way men do them. No, listen, I am a man and with all humility, it is within my power to be able to use influence or resources to just upgrade someone's life. If God upgrades you the same way I'm doing it, then it means we are colleagues. The jealousy of God makes him to be spectacular. There is a signature that only his hand can sign. So that you are, that's why he told Moses, say, listen, 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 Moses, leave all of this. Don't mix me in the many gods in Egypt. I am that I am. And I will have to do something that distinguishes me. He does it so that no man will ever claim credit for it. There are things that is difficult to say God did it. You just say God did it because um, you don't want to look like a stupid person. You are in the midst of intelligent people and the obvious is to say God did it. But there are really things that everybody knows that this one is God's doing. This is what God wants to do tonight. If all you get is a job, men can do that. You don't have to be a Christian to get jobs. You just need to understand the laws of life. But that there is something that God can do. Show me a man that restores time. Show me a man that restores time. When time is gone, it's gone, no. But not in God's economy. Time is like a chess. He can take it forward and backward. Listen. You see, Ba, I tell you why God does not hurry. For many years, he gives men speed, but God does not hurry. And you have to be God to understand why he does not hurry. It does not make sense to hurry when you have this kind of authority. You only hurry because of something that can overpower you. Are we together now? If I have a bank and I'm hurrying up and you say, Apostle, hurry up, five o'clock, they will lock the bank. I said, don't worry. So they say, see, I know, I saw the face of that man. He will lock the bank. It's my bank. So the time was only supposed to be for you. When any time I come, the bank opens. Listen, listen very carefully. So when you say, God, show up, otherwise, men will say, God say, it doesn't make any difference. I've checked for the reasons why I should hurry, and I didn't find it. There is nothing that can put me under pressure to hurry. I am God. Huh. He comes in his majesty, 
And sometimes he allows the pride of men to just continue while they speak. God just comes and says, what did men say? And they will say that there is no rising in this family. That the first person built a house at 45. And God says, if I use the man who is 30 years old, they would think he went to school. Let me use the mama that does not see. I would do something with her. And she would dedicate her house in two months. This is God for you. God is not interested in any miracle that will not allow the message of his glory to be written on it. There are times that when you bring challenges to God, it's an insult, so he allows it to go deep enough to be worth his power. You don't bring to him what men can solve. You will confuse who solved it. Because while you were speaking to him, you spoke to men too. So that you don't mix the answer and just say, ah. Every time God wants to arise, even the sorcerers will not see that day. He will do something that makes everyone give up. And then he will now say, clear the way for me. Ah. This is God for you. Listen. My prayer is that after this meeting, eh, listen, you not only will receive miracles, but you begin to covet your life being a sign and a wonder. Don't just be a recipient of God's benevolence, but that you are like a canvas. When there are some paintings, when you see artists draw, you just ask, what was in the mind of this? Let God reveal to you what his mind can do. I don't like ordinary things in my life. I like things in my life that come with a statement. This is God. And someone will look at you and not even know how to smile again. He says, this thing, eh? it has to be God. He will just go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry for being foolish. You see, he has repented without your sermon. Your life was a sermon. They limited God in the wilderness. Listen, let me tell you this. Don't get used to pain. Don't get used to pain. There is an ability from heaven that can crush the gates of darkness. I know we are human beings and many times when things become increasingly uncomfortable, we build a theology around them to say it should continue. But this night, roll away the stone and let the God of heaven come in and show you that with men it is impossible, but with God, all things, all things are possible. Every time I pray for the miracle service, I don't pray for too many things. I don't pray, God, heal the sick, cast out devils. No, that's not my prayer. Lord, let there be something. Sign a signature upon someone's life, upon someone's family. You know, I was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon. And while we're talking about this, my sister was speaking and said that, um, that it looks like this miracle service, God is visiting families, not just individuals. He just wants to move past individuals. Remember, I told you, you are not free when your family is not free. Let me tell you sincerely. He said, as for me and my house. If the, jo the brothers of Joseph all had dreams, nobody would kill anybody. It was because only one over how many had dreams. And the rest said, you are joking. You saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bow. But when everybody rises by the finger of God, then it is a testimony. I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family, but give God a few minutes tonight to answer them. God has an answer. My brothers and my sisters, the God we serve is not man. Don't get used to it. God is not a president of a ministry. God is not the CEO of a bank. God is not the CMD of a hospital. God is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone. No. He sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. You will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before. Come with your vessels increased and enlarged. Lord, I know you are stepping in. I know you are changing my life. It's June but people have laughed at me. Where is the extraordinary fruitfulness? I'm still begging. I don't even have 250000 to pay rent. My prayer life has gone down. Ha! 
this God of heaven, my brothers and my sisters, it doesn't take time. When God opens his mouth from heaven, anything plus anything plus God is the answer he says should be. Your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be. Your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be. I continue to pray and I say, Lord, let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders, but a sign and a wonder itself. If you are looking for a salmon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia. And there is salmon. Is you, are, you are seeing a marvelous God. Listen. By the grace of God, within the time God has given us, we will, we will disprove the pride of men in this world. All of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor. God has sent us to disprove them. That whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary. Whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension. Whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God. Whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week. There is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men. Please don't get used to the natural course of things. There is an advantage. God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. That people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week. Because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there is no message. No, you are not a sign and a wonder. You have what it takes to do signs and wonders, but God wants you to be the sign yourself. To be like that star that shines in the east, that when men look at you, they say, what manner of God is this? Men whom the earth was not worthy of. See, there is nothing the devil can do about this. No. No. There is a kind of speed that God can bring to your life. Regardless of who loves you or who does not love you, it doesn't play any role. God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement. Let me tell you, fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement. You will look for their downfall, wasting your time. They will just continue to rise, held by the jealousy of God himself. together now. Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nation. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and Pocket your destiny. No. I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you. So that when we begin to minister, you don't just stand. Some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others. Because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far. 
my brothers and sisters, what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that he is mighty? Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it. Because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Ah. When Jesus came, he said, you say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything and turn a man's life around. Hallelujah. Someone gave me a very humorous testimony. I think it was yesterday. They had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad. And, um, uh, you know, I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something. And they had just deprived that man for five years. I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, no salary, no benefits because some ammunitions were missing and they traced to him. Imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years. Things went down. And you know, if, if he wins the case, they will have to restore everything plus damages. Are we together? And they kept manipulating, manipulating. And I think just yesterday I was told that, was it yesterday or I think this week, the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor. I said, you should start dancing in your household. Because whether the devil likes it or not, Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it. Let God be true. And let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s, talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day, someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die. Worry. Pastors collapse on stage. I've told you that there is a technology that sends Israel to Egypt. It's called hunger. Every time there is hunger, Israel must go to Egypt to find bread. Genesis 42. Please give it to us. Let's just read it. I apologize. The projection is not very clear, but just see that scripture. Now, everyone read. If you can see it, we're reading one and two. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? 
corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet, but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to, including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, and that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bet the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, life. godliness. Life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with biro and the price is double. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And he says, hey, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pay. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think uh, two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of news satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible.
health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. No. I said, I said, I, 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 and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. Or I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child, let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night, God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. He will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is speaking here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction is a signature. The thief, Satan. He comes into a joyful family. Are we together? Happy husband. Come my dear. Happy wife. When the thief comes in between them, he must scatter everything. One flimsy excuse or the other. He will come in between business partners and shred them. When Satan passes a place, you know this is him. He will leave his signature. Stealing, killing, destruction. We would be in trouble if Jesus stopped there. But he says, I am come. He didn't say, I have come. I am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly, lavishly. I am come that he may have life. I am come that he may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now, the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray, I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says, according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter one from verse two, please. Grace and peace, verse two, be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse three. It says, according as his divine power hath given us. So what gives us in this kingdom? His divine power. Never forget this. It is not faith. Faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass. The agency, the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power. For many years, there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing. There is no argument there. Are we together? Faith is the pipe that the power of God flows through to carry supernatural solutions to you. If there is no faith, there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation, it will not be possible. You don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by his divine power. Now let me teach you this. I've taught you again. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind 
the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say, give me the privilege of blessing you. Nobody is really stingy. The problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed. The earth is a realm of execution. The same way your body is. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, ah, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. Then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. When Noah was ready to open the ark, when he opened the ark, there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves. The Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them. Animals with no higher intelligence, they found their way to the ark. If animals can find their way to the ark, why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you? Why should breakthrough find it difficult to... Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk. You rest only when the grace walks. Let me tell you, life is hard when you are walking on your own. In this kingdom, we don't walk with our hands. Our hands only help us to receive the grace. When it comes, you enter your Sabbath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of God is the spiritual mechanism responsible. The signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now, the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs, they will happen according as his divine power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The information is not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power, he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. There are people inside, there are people outside, there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for God. It will be very wicked to share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and tell everybody bye-bye. Return back with your challenge. No, I want you to believe God tonight and insist Lord, whatever will come upon me must come upon me. Whatever must change must change. Whatever must grow must grow. 
Whatever must die, must die. When there is no expectation, it becomes wrong for God to visit you. Because one of the things that he gave men, seven benefits given to man at creation, one of it is the right to choose. The will that God gave man is a fundamental right. It's not for Christians. Once you are a man, you were given the right to choose. Salvation, even at the detriment of your going to hell, was left for your choice. God will never, never, never violate your right to choose. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you, choose life. I said before you prosperity and poverty. I said before you success and failure. I said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality. It's up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you're a family man here, as for you and your house. You can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no, you have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal five, ten minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs, and wonders be wrought in the name of your holy son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get results. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace 
And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of grace. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, say, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Father, turn my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Shalabarata <laughs> Gatos. the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit and the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people, the power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then, and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back, right to the center. I'm seeing the power of God come on someone now. From the back, right to the center. From the back, right to the center. Please bring them out right now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit. Remember the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. 
And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness. I want to pray now. I see fire in this place. This is what I'm seeing. By the spirit of the Lord. And listen. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ. Responsible for any challenge and any predicament. It must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I curse every power. Bring them out right now. Every oppression of darkness. It must go now. It must go now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Please bring them out quickly. I'm still praying. The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit. I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it. At the count of three again, you're going to shout that name. I see opening, opening doors that have been closed. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be open now. Every closed door. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors over families. Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare, be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road, online, be free now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One. Two, three, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, we blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, hey. oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern state. 
Right now, God is bringing deliverance. The East, Abia, Anambra State, Enugu State, Eboy State. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state. The power of God is coming upon you right now. Right now. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. I'm seeing the map. The east. God is bringing liberty. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the map again. I'm seeing an arrow. And I'm seeing it go to Benway. Benway State. Right now I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release their destinies right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front. There are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference. I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now. Bring them out right now by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Things must change in your life. My friend, this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree the power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command a restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, 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 arrows right now. Right here, arrows, arrows, go now. Arrows are being removed out of people. In the name of Jesus, Madam, be free right now. 
be set free now. The Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this room, I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to Overflow 1. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now, as I'm passing, be free. Be free. Help them, please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road, just right here. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Karis Kobaru Katosh, help her please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just... I'm seeing fire right now. And I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs. Right now, be, be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. There is a lady here. God is saying it is over. Right now, I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, please, if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Please shift. That lady, be free now. I'm pointing my hands to her. I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray. Begin to pray, overflow three. Pray. Pray, overflow three. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three, I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. Every oppression of darkness right to the back. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be free now. Be free now. Bring them out. I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ, release God's people right now. At the count of three, I'm seeing fire resting on people 
and I'm seeing a number of 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. Every door that has refused to open, I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed, I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow 3, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here, but in the name of Jesus, I declare, move to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here. Overflow 3. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I will pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three like Elijah, may that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, Step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three, let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, 
Four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3 and the extension there, whatever must live your life. As I'm passing this place, please, I, I'm releasing my faith. Open your mouth now and declare, Lord, it must live my life now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray, please. All those in front here, the spirit that ties your destiny, I command at the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. The power of God is resting on someone here. There's an anointing coming on someone right here. In the name of Jesus. There's an anointing coming on someone here. And the Lord is saying it comes to an end. That family crisis comes to an end. The power of God is resting on someone by my left here. Right now receive that anointing. Let it go in Jesus' name. Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me, my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the Spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing what looks like smoke, just this region, where, I'm, where you're looking at me. Right now, there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God, like a wind, just coming on them, just this road. Right now, Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity, four of you, by the spirit of grace. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you. You will be mightily used by God. Where is that person? Spirit of the living God. The hand of God just near the gate here. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. A new dimension in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. May you step into that level in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend. Touch this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands over you. I command, I'm seeing chains all over your body. I command those chains to give way now. In the name of Jesus, release him now. Let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I cut those chains. I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe. Let me pray for those here. Please, all of you are here. I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence. I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people. There is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now. Five of you, right now. These spirits, my God, my God, I'm seeing something living right now. Release them now. Release, no matter how long, release them now. It is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the living God.
you are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have, seeing dead people, is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus, be by the power of the Holy Spirit. The there, is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now. I just... Please don't be carried away acting this thing. I passionately to help full experience God. I'm praying. I don't know where that family is. But right now scattered in this congregation, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now. I'm seeing a family here. None of you has a job. None of you. There are even a few graduates, but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work effectually. Now, step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen. Those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now, all across. Two, you can't control yourself. Hold them, please. Whether you're an usher or I release that grace. Speed. Two people. Strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing two of you, a prophetic anointing. You are not prophets, but you have been desiring this grace. The grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is. I don't know where they are, but I stretch my hands. May that anointing find you right now. Accuracy of sight. and Help them, help them, please. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. An angel of the Lord is taking away reproach. There is a family here. The Lord is saying the captivity ends now. An anointing is coming upon you right now. It's now. In the name of Jesus. Someone here, is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. What of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court case. Court case, who is that please? Court case. Don't, make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? 
Hold on. I have to. Where are you from? Where is that? I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent. Eh? Listen. When I make an altar call, run and come. Because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals. And we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, hear me. When God locates us like this, it's because he wants to help hey, There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no. We're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing lying down in Port Harcourt. Port, uh, yes, I Port Harcourt. You came from Port Harcourt. Go on. I'm going to pray. Do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation. Please, as you are standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think. I'm just because I've come outside like this to encourage you, to let you know that you must not make it inside. You were. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now. In just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God your own church you are assisting someone you came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother but you came to take fire stand up why you came listen to me you are going to go back and you will step into a dimension signs and wonders that will surprise you Sarah in the name that is above all names Every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I cut spirit now name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a family money does not stay in your house no matter what happens once resources enter you love God but resources something must happen either sickness or they will steal it or something will come up I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying, an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. 
let that anointing locate you right now in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and begin to pray my friend your hands shout Jesus as loud as you can an end comes now in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your voice and pray in the spirit everyone my dear look at me I command that spirit to leave you now of darkness must let you go in Jesus name lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oppression leaves right now someone here there is a spirit that has oppressed your family it must go now I command that devil of darkness help her please that spirit must leave now in the name of Jesus please everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit God is visiting us right now one media person here there is an anointing resting on someone the Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God captivity coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God let it end now in the name of Jesus my friend I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you and the Lord is wiping away infirmity in the name of Jesus infirmity let it go right now please make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the spirit of death there is a family here that spirit must go now the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come are you a man of God come you too please come I don't know you where are you coming from sir where do you, what do you have to do in Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me, from Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're in ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 See, the Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer. Is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm I what's your name you must always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them sir. Jennifer is this your child yes, sir. where are you coming from from excuse me excuse me huh? from GRA no no where is where you coming Kaduna State. Kaduna State I want to pray for you so that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you does it make yes. sense what I'm saying yes, sir. I want to pray for you well this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 I will pray for you. Mama, 
Where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America, she's the one that sent me to you. She has been stealing her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come. So that show me you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, that back pain. Eh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died, but they are alive talking to you. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. And in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Yes, sir. You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did you apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing they that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. No, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes, and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you, are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child there. Eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you're a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here? Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are father. not together with your husband. Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem her. Eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Ay. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, just, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you and 
when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, 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 just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? Port Harcourt, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife, um, I've been listening to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. And she insisted that she come the night session. I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your hearts to love him more than money in the name of Jesus and that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesera State. You are from where? Nesera. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are 82. I've gone, we are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, the man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the son Amen. of the living God. You will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? So you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? Huh? I'm Lenny Salomo. You are, I'm not Lenny. I'm Lenny Salomo. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sakato I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully.
God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it two B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down right down there we'll call you overflow 2c please listen then there's overflow 3 i don't know if you understand what i'm saying this is the main auditorium this is overflow 1 this is overflow 2 then from this place down to second equis overflow 2b from that same place down is overflow 2c so that so that you would know if you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I'll pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow one, I mean overflow here, please, you are trusting God for healing, come stand here. Overflow one, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow two, stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2A, please create a space for them there. Overflow 2A, create a space for them there. And then overflow 2C, Stand in front of your projector stand. And then overflow three, you can stand in, um, in front of your projector stand. Those online, connect by faith. And then we'll pray, we'll pray with you. We're going to do this very fast. We thank God there are many hands today. And while they minister to you, I would like you to believe God for a miracle. You are a man of God. You are a ministry here. Open up your heart and connect. You are trusting God for the grace for signs, wonders. Make sure that you connect. The worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that. And concurrently, while that is happening, please make sure you submit your prayer request. Everyone, make sure you pen down your prayer request. And then we are going to pray on it and let the God of heaven visit us right now. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Um, Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh, Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do overflow three. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow three. Um, Benga will do overflow two. Overflow two, Pastor Alpha and Ima, you do overflow one. Um, overflow one, we need a way of reaching overflow. Kenny. Kenny will do overflow 2B. Overflow 2B. We'll do overflow 2B. And then Isaac, Isaac in media, he will do overflow 2C. Let's make it that way. Praise the Lord. Father, we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across, let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you. This is what I'm seeing. 
an anointing is coming on you right now and the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of Jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. please stretch your hands to the prayer request begin to pray in the spirit Lord you are the God that answers prayers I decree and declare in the name of Jesus pray over these requests is that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever there is a covenant of answered prayer in this place lift your voice and pray father I decree and I declare I prophesy I proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of Jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare make sure you are praying make your declaration this that I brought before the God of all flesh will never 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 return as a disappointment I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit those online joining us from all over the world connect in the name of Jesus from America to Asia the UK Canada everywhere we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen I want you to understand that this is not a ritual this is a mystery are we together now there are all kinds of testimonies that have come I can prophesy and there is so much I can be limited I cannot discern everybody's expectation but this is a representation of your hunger is a representation of your tears and let me tell you this please don't get familiar with this this is not some some spiritual thing just for the fun of it there is power in what we are doing it's guided by understanding it's guided by an anointing and God has a covenant is protected by his jealousy in the name of Jesus Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees before the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you in the name of Jesus I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today that you will see them no more forever in the name of Jesus every request here that is a death sentence cancer HIV and any kind of incurable disease we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus every impossible situation represented here may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost for those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones I declare may the angel of God's presence these angels that do not know time and distance may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and bet supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare over your life we're entering the second half of the year it says revive thy work O God in the midst of the year I decree and declare every spiritual weariness every prayerlessness it dies right now in the name of Jesus passion for the things of the spirit like never before 
hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before. Let it rest upon your life now. I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God. I declare you receive it right now. I pray over your life. Every long standing issue. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have sought counsel. It has refused to change. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. By this time next month. Return with your testimony. By this time next month. Return with your testimony. Please believe it. Don't just shout amen. Believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this month coming, it must enter your hands. I declare that it must enter your hands. There are families where is the women that feed the men. Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draughts from morning till night while the women go to fetch. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now, the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. It says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven between now and the next three months like the ark of God in the house of Oben Edom I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain may my God give it to you every dying business hear the word of the Lord I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships, and assemblies, and a dimension of fire a dimension of insight you have never seen. Receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies. Believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. 
I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus, every man who must arise in this season for your sake to favor you, wherever they are around this globe, by the spirit of grace, I call them to your life now. I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know, I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time. And one of us, God just opened a door. And a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life. Every area of struggle. I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer, the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus, receive help from the Lord. I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects is just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God. In the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written. In the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It would be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the God who has helped me by his grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here due for promotion, but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men. Go back into your next level. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to pray for you. Honor is the ability to discern, to celebrate, and to reward a man for his uniqueness. It's not enough for your value to be discerned. 
you must live a rewarded life. You will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life. I pray for you. The eyes that can perceive and can discern your value, I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus. Any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word. The Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it will be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two Win that war today, win that war today, win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow, one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to Jesus the Bible says ye must be born again <laughs> hallelujah praise the Lord I want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart Jesus is here say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you 
this night I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I am a child of God I'm changed forever amen keep your hands lifted Jesus I present to you the ones you died for I thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death I pray in the name of Jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God everything that is not of God I come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate you I salute you very quickly everyone in concert I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and you will have a few people just welcome you on our behalf God bless you very quickly dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekapos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and let a path. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.